what we do Light them up, drink them down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all Well, 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 well It's a party, folks Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program podcast and video extravaganza known internationally Hi, as the world famous smoking and toasting welcome my friends to show number 297 we are if i do the math here yeah. I, I think it turns out to be almost exactly halfway to 300 300 to 333 which is going to be our that's going to be the thing we're looking for is 333 right we're very excited about it that's going to be our big anniversary celebration i mean anybody can celebrate 300 yeah but but 333 uh-uh not anybody not just anybody can do that That's true. and we intend to so we're in the top 4% buddy we are our program's all about craft beer fine spirits and hand rolled cigars and as uh, my co-host just pointed out this program that you are listening to or watching right now is in the top 4% of all podcasts in the world which right. is very exciting <laughs> i feel honored don't it's you pretty awesome yes. yeah it's thanks to you guys and thanks to the fact that we actually still do it. We which have is a put, certain amount of stick, us, stick to it. <laughs> well, you know, it's not that hard to stick to it when it's like, oh, wait, it's podcast day again. Let's go drink and smoke. I don't know. I don't know how I could, uh, you know, not be excited about that. So uh, on today's program, I am going to do something I've never done before, which is I am going to show you how to make a cocktail on this program now, I am not a mixologist. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I, we have some of those guys come on the show, and they're so like good, and they're so organized, and they're so crafty about it. They're into the artisanal side of all of this. For me, I just like making stuff at home that mm -hmm. I can drink, and I only know how to make a handful of different drinks. But I've gotten really, really good at the ones that I make regularly because I've been able to like fine tune them and right. go into them and decide, them enough times. decide what works. So I'm going to share one of them with you today. I will be explaining to you how to make the perfect vodka gimlet. And I'm going to tell you right off, this is one of the easiest drinks because... That's the only kind I can make. You know, the, the guys that come in here, you know, like when we have uh, uh, the mixologists on and stuff, and they come in and they bring in this special extract juice of a papaya that only grows in the uh, western side of the mountain in certain countries. In, and, in and, Peru, right. right. Yeah, and, and I'm I love that they do that, but I just, I can't, I can't compete <laughs> with that. But I can tell you how to make a drink with four or five ingredients, easy enough to find ingredients, and make it to where people will go. Oh, this is really good. You're ahead of me. My my that's what the gimlet's my be. drink making abilities are. Uh, uh, I'll pour whiskey into a glass, right. and if I want a cocktail, sometimes I'll put a piece of ice in it. And then you have a and mixed have a, drink of sorts. Yes, yes, yeah, so but your cocktail. wife is very good at making. She drinks. She is incredibly good and experimental about it. It's funny, and she doesn't always she doesn't always win on that, but she always has fun with it. Well, I have one simple formula that I've been able to follow with some consistency across the various drinks that I have learned how to make, and that formula is always. Use more booze than the recipe calls for. More booze. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I can make a decent martini. Uh, I can make. A wait, wait, wait. Now, when you make a martini, do you use more booze than the recipe calls well, for? Well, yeah, actually, I kind of do. <laughs> uh, but it's I hard because I think it's hard to do. Yeah, a bigger martini. A bigger martini. That's exactly right. <laughs> like when Dean Martin used to come out with that glass yeah, that was right. like this big. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Uh, no, martini, uh, a good dirty martini is what I is what I like to make. Uh, I have gotten to where I'm pretty good at the margarita now, and it's been from you know uh, trying different things and different uh, ways to to make it, and uh, then my latest thing that I'm just all crazy about uh, is this vodka gimlet. Now I'll tell you right off the bat. One of the big secrets here is fresh squeezed lime juice. So we yeah. will be using oh, yeah, yeah. that makes so much difference. The you fresh can't even squeeze tell you. instead of the the, the mm -hmm. little plastic, the little concentrate or the bottle. or the little limey shaped thing. Right. right? Yeah. So anyway, we'll get to all of that. We'll also get to some very interesting beers today from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, one of our favorites, Duclaw Brewing Company. Mm, I we, like Duclaw. We will be trying their Mad Bishop Oktoberfest. That so, sounds awesome. Since it is in fact uh, Oktoberfest time yes. now, even though Oktoberfest started coming out around July, which I never understand. <laughs> You know, I think I told you this last week. I, I got my, I saw my first uh, commercial. Got my first email that said 
you know, the the Christmas season is here. I was like, no, it's not. It's still 99 <laughs> degrees outside. You remember when they used to wait till like, after Thanksgiving oh, to yeah. start selling so Christmas stuff? So the old Charlie Brown uh, uh, joke from the Peanuts, like, Halloween special was that Charlie Brown went to the uh, store to try to get his Halloween costume, and all they had were Christmas decorations. Right. That's Halloween. <laughs> now it starts in July, <laughs> August, man. It's it's just, anyway. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get to... Uh, you know what I do enjoy doing once in a while, though, is I'll buy a turkey, and uh, and we'll cook it up and stuff it and everything, and we'll have thanksgiving in the middle of summer oh yeah that's that could okay. be kind of fun that could be especially the way you make turkeys because yeah, i i you smoke turkey right smoke turkey is so good mm, fantastic um we're gonna do a, a mystery ipa today uh, i've got a hazy Ooh. that i want to uh, pour for you and have you taste before i tell you who makes it okay so we'll look forward well, I'm, to that. I'm down for that so that, that's a mystery hazy uh mad bishop oktoberfest and then from anchorage brewing company those creative those guys, guys at anchorage we're going to be trying something called the tide and its takers it's a triple with the bretonomyces and i am really excited about opening this one up and trying it because it's uh it's one of those. I feel like I the, know that name. Comes in the bottle with the uh, uh, the cork top, like a champagne cork yeah, that's got yeah. the little cage that down on it. Fun. So yeah, uh, we got some cigars to tell you about. Uh, cigars to watch for. Uh, got some other things we'll be sharing with you. Uh, other interesting lists and things. And of course, we will be bringing you uh, this program's um, you know signature uh, now uh, segment, which we've been doing for how long? We've we been doing drinking news. Man, we started drinking news pretty close to the. It wasn't. We didn't. Hadn't done it at the hundred show. Yeah, episode ish. Yeah. I yeah. think is somewhere around there was the first. And now we're at almost three hundred. We've been we've been doing it for a while. That's a lot. That's a that's, lot. It's trying to come up with some drinking news. I'm too. telling you. I'm telling you. Today's uh, today's drinking news teaser headline. Better than a bag of, you know. So we. Wait, wait, story. wait. What? You know. Better than a bag of Better than a bag peanuts? of peanuts? Mm, maybe not. Probiscus? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there, I promise. All right, so uh so a lot of fun stuff to get to on the program today and uh oh, I I, I had to tell you this before we go any further. I got to tell you about and I'm, I need to look up the email that my wife sent me. Because uh, I asked her to email me the exact phrase. Saw a new ad while watching football yesterday for um, Michelob Ultra. And they have a new slogan. Oh, do they uh, now? Yes. Does and, it, does and, it and have wanna, anything to do with the beer itself? Well, uh, maybe more so than some. But here you go. You ready? Uh -huh. This is Michelob Ultra's. And you know, those of you who haven't tried Michelob Ultra, it's about the lightest beer you can buy. Yeah, it's got it's, uh, uh, like 94 calories and, you know, like two carbs or something. And it is really just almost water. Yes. It, it is so devoid of anything it's, resembling it's, beer. It's, 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 it's like to... sex in a canoe kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so their new slogan, if you're ready. All right. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. How much do you suppose that 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 macro brew spent to come up with that? I, I don't know, but it, it, I think I, I hate to just be this way, but it feels like they got it wrong. And I'm not even saying that being critical of the beer, which is easy to do because it's not very good. But the Michelob, the whole concept behind Michelob Ultra, if I understand it correctly, is if you're watching your waistline. If you're trying not to uh, consume carbohydrates, mm -hmm. but you still want to be able to have a beer, mm -hmm. you can have one of these, and it's low in calories, low in carbohydrates, and maybe you can have a couple and not feel guilty about, you know, kind of cheating on your uh, your diet plan, right? right? That's the whole point of Michelob Ultra. Either that or if you just want really the lightest beer you could possibly get. But it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Have you ever? That's, uh, that sounds like the slogan have for you something. Ever met anyone who loves turkey bacon? No, <laughs> neither have no. I. I've had when, turkey bacon. I've enjoyed turkey bacon. When you take, but out, I wouldn't say I love it. When you take out all the things that make bacon good, mm -hmm. it's like I. If turkey bacon is the only thing on the menu, if the only thing you I'm, get, I'm probably not going to have it. So here's the thing, though. It's only. 
now I blanked on the slogan. It's, it's only it's only worth it if you. It's enjoy only it. worth it if you enjoy it. They've got that's a backwards slogan for Michelob Ultra. Michelob Ultra's slogan should be something like, you know, have the beer without the guilt. I mean, it'd have to be catchier than Absolutely. that. Right? that Absolutely, would, that, but, that, but would that, be, would be the, yeah. that would be the that would be the spirit of it. And right. I think right. in that aspect, then they're then they're doing what they're trying to do. You know, you know what. The but they're slogan. trying to gloss it up. Right. They're trying to. They're trying to. They're gonna. They're gonna change the package soon. And it's gonna be some kind of like carb activated can. <laughs> carb activated can, <laughs> so it never activates. I guess. Uh, so, so no. But the thing about the thing about it is, if you're gonna have a slogan like "It's only worth it if you enjoy it," that should be for something like the oh, big decadent. bad Baptist Imperial yeah, Stout. That for that's, something that's decadent. like way high in ABV, way high in calories. Right. Right. That. That's what. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Should be the the slogan for lemon meringue pie you know <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not not for a beer that's like a, a like a, a, bacon that's the wrapped problem. figs you know like. kind of like you were saying about turkey bacon if somebody offers me a beer and the only thing they have is Michelob Ultra I have to really stop and consider do I really want a beer that bad you know what I mean yeah well because uh, a lot of times it's easier to say I'll, I'll just take water because you know? well, because here's the thing too. Like, let, let's talk about let's talk about Michelob Ultra and its place in the beer world because it does have a very valid place. Like, I'm not, I'm not I'm not gonna say you know for those of you that drink that, I get why you're drinking it, mm -hmm. but it's damn sure not the flavor, right? You know, um, and and that's just that slogan doesn't make any sense if you put it in that context. So I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I, they're I, just I, trying to gloss it up. I had to wait to see the commercial again because I was sure I had gotten it wrong. <laughs> you know, what, what? Uh, because it makes no sense. But then again, you know these these macro brew companies. I mean, they spend that, that's the thing. They spend so much time on gimmicky things like the mountains turning blue or the the gyro twist bottleneck or or whatever the vortex, whatever these things. They yeah, do. yeah, the vortex. And, and they spend a... they spend a lot more time and money on the marketing of their beer, which would include coming up with the proper slogan. Then they do on the beer itself. How much do you suppose they spent on that marketing campaign? Oh, God. I mean, you know that it was probably in the millions. Well, it, they were advertising on an NFL football game, which I think means they probably oh. bought all of the NFL football games on that network. I'm talking about before network, they right? even advertise it. Like, they paid people. They paid oh, yeah. a whole oh, committee. Oh, for sure, yeah. To come up with slogans, and, and that's they, the one they chose. And they wound up doing focus groups, I'm sure. Out of touch. Hey, how about, how about this uh, How about this Michelob Ultra people? Why don't you spend a little bit of that money on maybe figuring out how to add some flavor right. to your low-carb beer that is very successful? Absolutely. And you could have Michelob Ultra Ultra. Or Michelob Ultra Plus Plus. Ultra or Plus Plus, right, right? Yeah, something. The non plus <laughs> ultra. The, <laughs> the MK uh, Ultra. I don't know. It's just, uh, anyway, I like you know, the non plus because that means something totally different. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was completely non plus, as a matter of fact. Um, non plus by this beer. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but everything's plus now, though. Have you, have you noticed that? Yeah, like, yeah. it's Disney Plus and Paramount Plus yeah, and yeah, yeah. You know, all the streaming networks. And in fact, there's plus. even a, a commercial for Hulu now where they're. You know, they kind of make fun of that whole thing by saying, "We need to get ice back." Remember when everything was ice? Oh yes, when Bud everything Light was at Bud Light ice, ice and, and Miller even ice. The wrappers were all ice. Yeah, that was yeah, awesome. Yeah. Speaking of ice, we have ice today for our uh, uh, for our cocktail. Nice. So I'm very much looking forward to uh, uh, to shaking that up for you guys. So uh, I assume with the uh, goings on of the week, my good friend, uh, that you've had the opportunity to smoke something interesting. My friend, I uh, walked into. I had actually. I got up in time. I got myself some breakfast. Ah, very nice. Had one of those mornings it was kind of casual and everything went on time um and that was nice i uh, uh i went up to um casa de monte cristo and said hi to the guys up there and wandered through the humidor and i found a couple cigars i hadn't had i did pick up an extra one of those uh bx3s from uh cao those are so oh, good. nice yeah so good have you had one of those they yet? have they're Man, fantastic they're so good anyway um uh, and wandered around, and I found the, the, uh, they just released the newest uh, Crown Heads, uh, Las Cavaleras. Mm. And this is one that comes out every year, and it's always a tribute uh, uh, to the people they've lost every year. You oh, know, yeah. Right, right. Loved ones and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Is mm -hmm. This is their tribute cigar to that every year. Uh, so it has a nice story behind it. Um, and then uh, and on top way, of that, it's a different blend every year. Right. And just so we're clear for people who uh, are not that provision in Spanish, Las Cavaleras stands for... 
the Cavalleris. That is that is one hundred percent correct. Okay, That's the same gotcha. translation I got from Google. Okay, good, yes, good, good to know. Go. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, this is an important cigar because it is different every year. Yeah, and it's different every year. So you can you can review this one yearly and mm-hmm. and have a different experience every time. So this is the limited edition uh, Las Cavalleras uh, twenty twenty two version. This is a Nicaraguan puro. Okay. Um, so immediately, I expect you know certain things happening on this thing. Right. Uh, is rolled by my father and Esteli. So should you I be, know. Should I be preparing for the Nicaraguan <laughs> Pepper Blast Barry <laughs> Gibb impression song? I don't. <laughs> you can if you want. Okay. It was a slight variation on the Nicaraguan okay. uh-huh. Pepper Blast, but let's start with the way it looks. It has this tawny hue kind of wrapper to it. Mm-hmm. This light brown. A uh, very pretty uh, cigar with the blue band and a blue and gold band on it. It's it's really really nice, uh, really nice looking. Slightly lumpy, firm with some softer spots on it. Um, leathery feel to the outside of the wrapper and somewhat oily. Um, and then it had a uh, uh, the crown heads footer on it that, that a lot of the cigars have. It's the gold with the mm-hmm. black letter mm-hmm. that says crown heads on it. So um, <clears throat> you you do, you want to make sure you remove that, or you're going to have a very papery yes. cigar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 Come on, we've all lit a cigar with a footer on it. The before. burning paper note is never one I really <laughs> no. am looking for in a cigar, uh, and uh, second only, by the way, to the uh, burning ribbon note. Oh which, yeah, the burning which can ribbons also worse. Happen, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the pre-light sniff on this cigar, earthy and somewhat barnyard, uh, sweet and creamy at the foot. The foot. It was was a really interesting thing on this cigar because it smelled so much different than the uh, than the wrapper of the mm-hmm. cigar, mm-hmm. and the foot gave you uh, hints of chocolate and coffee and, and uh, uh, a lot of sweetness to it. And then the the, the outside of the wrapper was was <coughs> some barnyard and and um, earth kind of smells. It was really nice, a little bit of leather. The uh, pre light draw on this, I used a clip. It had a medium draw on it. Um, I, I, I tasted like uh, fall leaves. You know that, like when mm-hmm. you when you go out and the leaves have all fallen, you have that 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 aroma in the air. It's, it's real a very nice. fall uh, autumn ish yeah, aroma. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a very nice, uh, and that's what kind of went into my head. So uh, if that's a little esoteric or weird, well, forgive me. Uh, fall leaves and leather on the lips. Uh, the 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 note that it left on the lips was really, really enjoyable. So nutty this is and striking sweet. me as a really interesting profile already. Right. Yeah. Nutty and sweet, coffee and mocha is what I got on a prelude draw. The initial light, we'll call this the prelude. The Nicaraguan <laughs> Spice and Nutty Blast. It, it was Nicaraguan Spicy Blast, but it was very nutty as well, right off the bat. Like, mm-hmm. just just straight off the bat. Complexity and depth from the start. Strong Nicaraguan pepper and wood notes tempered by uh, nutty and coffee and sweetness. Retro hails peppery and cinnamon. The first third of this, we'll call this Movement One, Andante. Moderately spicy and sweet, nutty and peppery, leather and coffee, mocha and cinnamon all play over a theme of mineral-rich earth. Complex, not crowded or confusing, each note has a distinctive clarity and individuality in the harmony of this palatable symphony. The retro hail is peppery and woody with a touch of leather, solid ash, perfect burn. Nice. Movement two. Allegro. Pepper picks up the pace a little bit with a new motif consisting of oak and pecan shell. This new harmony is fuller and somewhat simplified, uh, trading the complexity of the first movement for a more straightforward vibe. Coffee and bitter chocolate weave throughout the woody uh, and nutty notes and uh, complement the rich mineral earth undertone. Retrohale is oak and pepper and sweet, solid ash, perfect nice. burn. Nice. The last third of this picks it up a little bit more, up to a vivace. Uh, Movement three, toasty and sweet. Spices create a light and airy feel to this section. Pepper and leather and bitter chocolate harkens back to the original theme. Complexity returns here, and coffee and cinnamon and nutty tones blend masterfully with rich earth and mineral notes. Leather and toast and a slight mint note linger in the aftertaste. Mm. Retrohale is sweet, peppery, and earth. That's quite a description. Perfect burn. Coda. Well, I had to say something because, you know, yeah, the whole, the whole symphony thing. So the Coda, uh, an hour and 15 smoke time. This was a oh, nice. This was, I, I forgot to add on here that this was a five and three quarter by 46, I believe. It's a good so size. Not a, yeah. yeah. Not huge, but, but a decent sized cigar. Uh, but I really like, I really like those. Yeah. Uh, that's those like right in your wheelhouse yep, uh, totally. size wise. Um, mm-hmm. 
Uh, the price on this was twelve dollars, eleven ninety five. So that's a little pricey that's a, for a that's cigar. That's a super that, premium, one hundred percent super sure. premium. Yep, yep. But it was amazing. It was fantastic from beginning, and the burn was perfect. Everything about this cigar, uh, I enjoyed. You do expect this cigar to be a special one. At twelve dollars, I gave it a six and, though. I yeah. mean, it, oh nice. Oh, if, nice. if I would have, uh, if I would have paid fourteen dollars for this, I'd still be very happy. You with wouldn't it. have been like, disappointed with what you not spent, and what even you got. remotely batted an eye. Awesome. But it was twelve dollars, and it was totally worth it. Now, um, for all of you listening to this, this comes in at a medium, and some points maybe even a medium plus. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not a huge. Uh, full strength cigar, but it's pretty big. If you like spicy and pepper, and you like it with a little sweetness in it, this is definitely your cigar to try. Awesome, awesome! Yeah. I, I will definitely be getting one. Uh, your your description definitely made me want one. So I'm, I'm That's down. A, it's it was great. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go back for more. All right, very good. All right, we are gonna go back and uh, take a quick break. When we come back, I'll tell you about the cigar I smoked this week. Plus, uh, we're gonna be tasting some Mad Bishop. Oktoberfest from a very good brewery in Baltimore called Duclaw I love Brewing where Company. This is going. We'll be right back. Smoking and toasting. Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled mm, cigars. Those are good things. Those are all good things. All things that we love and enjoy. And if you enjoy uh, whiskey. Uh, Metallica's Blackened American Whiskey has now released its second uh, special release in the Masters of Whiskey series that they do. So what, what they've done, and this is really so cool, it's not something you expect a rock and roll band that has a spirit to be this vested in doing something this cool. Uh, it's, a, it's a whiskey called Blackened X Wes Henderson. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon finished in white port wine cask, a limited edition expression, and it was created in partnership with Ron Dietrich, who's Black and American Whiskey's master distiller. Now, of course, that uh, Dave Pickerel, Dave Pickerel uh, has yeah. passed away. Uh, but he did this, Ron, uh, Rob Dietrich did this in conjunction with uh, uh, Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame member Wes Henderson, who is the recently retired wow. Angels Envy co-founder. Yeah. And this is the first project he has worked on uh, post-retirement. So Metallica not messing around here. They're they're actually looking to do real legitimate whiskey. When you things. have when you have Dave Pickerel uh, to create your very first whiskey. Right. I mean you're doing it right. And we've had that whiskey on the show. It's good. It's real this good, is yeah. not Conor McGregor time. This is like no, it's, this it's is real, real good, good yeah. really legitimate stuff. And I'm uh, I'm very impressed with what Metallica has done in the whiskey world. And you know what? Might as well. Like clearly they have a love for this, and, and their clearly they is knew to go way better than their Fuel album. Yeah. <laughs> well, many things are better than the Fuel <laughs> album, but I, I digress. Uh, no, no, but seriously, uh, they really kind of dug in and done it right. Yes, for real. Uh, in terms of how celebrity. Uh, pro projects and vanity products like projects, yeah. Vanity pro yeah, you get the feeling it's more than just a vanity yeah. project. Although I do know those boys, they love to make them some money. Yep. And there's nothing. Well, they're wrong good with at that. it. Apparently, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, so let me tell you about the uh, cigar that I had this uh, this week. And while I do that, perhaps you could, uh, you know, open us up something to to sip on there, my good friend. Uh, I went the opposite direction of uh, of your cigar review uh, this week. Uh, you had a what a twelve dollar cigar. I did. Uh, I went the other direction. I smoked the Argyle Conundrum, Arr. the Toro. Arr, I know. It, I was going to fill the whole review with pirate jokes, but I, I I just decided to to spare you, and you can thank me later. Um, the Argyle line is produced exclusively for Holtz cigars in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When I lived in Philly, I shopped at Holtz, uh, among other places. And today, when I order cigars online, Holtz is one of my favorite spots to yeah, order from. I, I really, really like them. They deliver quick. Uh, there's no hassle. And they have pretty good prices on some of the A.J. Fernandez Holtz, stuff that I Holtz like. Holtz as well, and uh, this is uh, not a sponsor. <laughs> no. But Holtz as well is one of those places where a lot of times when you get cigars... Um, and they're shipped so promptly that when you get them in, they're not terribly shocked. They'll smoke pretty right. well. They'll smoke pretty well right when you get right, them. Right they're 100% right. right. Yeah. Now, Argyle, even though you can only get this from Holtz, this is considered to be a value cigar. Quotes right. around value. Uh, and I'll go ahead and tell you ahead of time uh, that this cigar costs $7.50 for a single one on the Holtz website. But 
If you buy a box of 20. Wait, there's more. That price drops down to about $3.50. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. I don't know why it's so much for a single stick. That's a, that's a but, big difference. Uh, but, yeah. but So if you're going to get some of these, get the box. Trust me. It costs me. a lot for a guy to <laughs> yeah, take it yeah. out and put an individual price <laughs> I on guess, it. I guess it does. Uh, the Conundrum uh, features a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper over Dominican binder and fillers. And I believe this cigar was rolled in the Dominican Republic. I couldn't get much more information on it than what it consisted of, including who it was rolled by. Uh, but they you know, they used some kind of a standard line like, uh, you know, skilled cigar you know, right. masters. So, okay, got it. Anyway, I believe it was rolled in the Dominican Republic. I got nuttiness, some hay, and a mellow tobacco sweetness on the pre-light sniff and on the cold draw. I used a punch, as I am prone to do, and I lit her up to see what I could see. Um, the cigar started off pretty mellow. No big pepper punch at the beginning. Nothing even resembling a, a Nicaraguan pepper blast. Mm -hmm. uh, what I did get, though, was a distinct oakiness along with notes of leather and raisin, little hint of sweet along with those drier wood notes. It was kind of nice. Uh, while the first impact of the smoke on the palate was pretty mild, this wasn't like a Macanudo or a typical milder cigar. After only a few puffs, I could start to feel that little tang on my tongue and a noticeable bit of black pepper on the retrohale. Gotcha. So I I'm thinking the Connecticut Broadleaf uh, rapper is mm -hmm. likely where that comes from, but um, I anyway, it was uh, it was mellow but interesting, and kind of built a little bit as that tang on the tongue started to increase. Second third was much like the first: wood, sweet tobacco, hint of pepper on the finish, just enough to keep the cigar interesting for me. Uh, I will admit that I'm not a huge fan of a lot of milder cigars, unless they're really creamy and toasty. Right, right. Uh, and they can, at times, uh, if they don't have that sort of creaminess or toastiness, they can strike me as the cigar equivalent of drinking a very light beer, like a right, Michelob right. Ultra, for example, hoping for more flavor and only getting a little bit. But then again, I've been smoking cigars for a while, so I've kind of worked my palate up. Uh, uh, Jong, who is on the Wheels of Steel today, our producer uh, in the studio, was talking about the first time he smoked a cigar and like it just sort of made him like lightheaded and and yeah. made him not feel very good. And it, but then he volunteered that it was it was at like a bachelor party. It was it was a Cuban. It was like yeah. that's probably not a really good my first cigar. No, that's not you know? that's not the best introduction uh, because the nicotine hit you get on a lot of the mm -hmm. Cubans is pretty big, and if you're not used to it, right, exactly, that will make you feel a little nauseous. Well, talking about flavor though, the Argyle Conundrum actually had plenty of flavor. I was pretty impressed with what this cigar gave me. Even though, uh, all, you know, all the way into the final third, I didn't get much of anything new. Maybe a slight uptick in that sweet, raisiny vibe. But there wasn't a whole lot of change from third to third like there are in some cigars. Uh, but one of the things that can be frustrating about value or El Cheapo cigars is the consistency from one stick to another. Yes. Um, uh, I experienced, I've experienced that a little bit with the uh, factory smokes. Yeah, my go-to go factory smokes are mm -hmm. like that. Every once in a yeah. while you get one that just doesn't hold yeah. well. And then you go, okay, throw that one out and just keep yeah. going. Uh, but I, I haven't smoked enough of these to really speak to that. Uh, but the cigar I used for this tasting and these notes was not only pretty flavorful all the way through, but the construction was damn near perfect. Nice. Zero burn issues, a nice straight burn line, plenty of smoke, no relights, and a perfect draw. Wow. It was really, uh, honestly, it smoked like a Padron Anniversario in terms of just the construction the and the, the quality of the construction. Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite impressive. I would put the Argyle Conundrum at just slightly south of medium body. Uh, the initial draw is quite mellow, but the pepper tang on the finish kicks it up to almost a medium bodied uh, smoke. I feel like the Connecticut Broadleaf Wrapper, I mentioned this, is responsible for imparting a great deal of the flavors mm -hmm. that keep the cigar interesting. I enjoyed the smoke, and this seems like one of the better choices to keep in the humidor for occasions when you're not sure if you can justify smoking something more expensive. So this one could totally, you know, spend time in my humidor aside, you know, beside my Gilberto Olivas, for example. Right, right. You know? Uh, so uh, did this rival an 8 to $10 cigar? Uh, you know, a My Father or even like a $7 A.J. Fernandez stick? No, definitely not. But that said, at 350 this is a great buy and one I think I'll 
be getting more of for, you know, driving with the top down or walking the dog or mowing the lawn, if I had a lawn or a mower. Right. Uh, I do recommend I mean, your front lawn is disco- discovery green. Right, you exactly. Don't do I don't have to mow that. They keep that pretty well <laughs> mowed. Uh, I recommend the Argyle Conundrum. Uh, thumbs up. And at three fifty, a good six on the price to quality scale. Honestly, if you told me this is a five dollar cigar, I would not have been disappointed. So, so where would you put it if you paid the full retail for a single, which you said was seven dollars? Uh, probably a four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, not quite getting what you pay for. Yeah, but I, at three dollars it, it, it was it was it's a big difference. I, I wouldn't have been like wildly disappointed at seven bucks, but compared to other seven dollars, because for seven dollars right. I can get, you know, a Bella Artez a Robusto, right, or or something in in that line. Even a uh, um, uh, there's even a I forget which Drew Estate uh, cigar now, but there's one of them that you can get. Maybe it's Underground or or uh, Undergrounds are usually yeah, in the six dollar yeah, range. Yeah, in that in that range, it's like hard to compete with that. You know right. what I mean? But um, it was it was quite good. At three fifty, it was excellent. For anybody who uh, hasn't heard our rating system, it's a price to quality. It's kind of a it's <clears> kind <throat> of a scale where it's one to ten, but five is Means you get is what you, you pay for. Get exactly what you mm-hmm. pay for. If you rate it above five. Then the the cigar is punching above its weight class, so mm-hmm. to speak, and below five would be a negative rating because it's not worth the price you paid. And there's some great cigars out there that might rate a four if they're seventeen dollars. Mm-hmm. It might be a great cigar, but if it's not a seventeen dollar worth cigar, you know. Well, this cigar at three fifty, as compared to other cigars that might come in at about that price, like like a JR alternative, for example, right, right. The, where they're oh, this is the alternative to the Cuban Cohiba. Well, yeah, no, it's not. But uh, but but still, those can be some decent, inexpensive smokes. Right, right. But this was better than that. Yeah. In in, in my opinion, it was it, it was better, more flavor. I really liked how. The initial draw was pretty mild, but then that that then pepper on your tongue just a little bit, yeah. gave, gave it a little bit more punch, and I, I like that. So uh, a good maybe second cigar for somebody who's only smoked extremely mild ones, yeah. and now wants to take that next step. This would be a good one, nice, good one to do. So, so I see you poured us some uh, some beer here, Ian. You want to tell us all I about? I, well, the I've Mad been Bishop? doing some research while you were talking. Oh, okay, well, why don't you uh, continue to do that? I'll take a look at the can. This. Is so malt forward. I absolutely love mm. it. It's, Duke Law doesn't mess around. Yeah, it's got uh, it's got this beautiful wow. round like uh, Munich malt kind of. Mm-hmm. It is very much that Munich malt. Yeah, it has like a little uh, almost a burnt caramel caramelized sugar kind mm-hmm. of aftertaste with a little bitter to it, which is really really perfect. Uh, and it's very malt forward. Like if I walk into a place and I say. I want a malty beer. Yeah, you would be going above and beyond giving me one of these. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And this that's is... one of the reasons I love the Mars in style. Anyway, the Oktoberfest beers, I just love that malt forward. This is kind of like a Marzen on steroids. You know what it's, I mean? It's like pretty it, big. It really yeah. goes into that. Plays into that very, very seriously. What I is it about the, a five point uh, eight? Yeah, five point eight is what it says. Uh, I love the label on this too. Uh, you can see that in the picture up here. It's got this great uh, Mad Bishop with the. Crazy eyes. Crazy eyes going on. <laughs> yeah. But I also was looking at the can a little while ago and have all these great little things going on. It says, count your blessings. Uh, Mad Bishop is a German-style Oktoberfest that faithfully delivers uh, a sermon of rich toasted malt flavor that goes down easy with crisp, clean finish. Nailed that one. That is absolutely if, correct. If Keegan were here, he would be asking you to show that to the camera. Yes. Oh, and there is that. Waving, Which camera do I even towards show it the to? camera. Um, and by the way, big thanks to uh, to Jong for filling in. We may have to pass that over. Can we do it? <laughs> we'll get, Try we'll that, get one. that one in a minute. There. <laughs> it's like it reminds me of those. Occasionally, you get that uh, like when you're watching like the local news or whatever, and they don't know which camera to look at, right. and they're looking off the wrong one. <laughs> uh, oh, we're yeah, gonna thanks. we're gonna do this one in post. We'll just put this up to yeah, the camera thanks, in post. Tom, back to you in the but uh, yeah, so it's got great it's it, it's got uh, great artwork on it. But it also says uh, Duclaw Brewing, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and then over here it says. Uh, uh, what does it say? Oh, it says, uh, drink the madness. Nike. It says, heavenly flavor crafted in Maryland. Craft be cherished, rules be damned. Mm. So oh, That's good. See, now there is a slogan. Craft be cherished, rules be damned. That's a slogan that fits this brewery and this beer. Not like the slogan for... You know, uh, Michelob Ultra, which doesn't fit the beer. No, no, right. not at all. Even without being critical of the beer, that slogan is not what you need for that beer. You need a slogan that See? says, "Okay, here's here's one for you." Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to be skinny. Flavor be damned. 
there you go. Now, obviously, they'd never adopt that, but but that would be a slogan that actually works for the But that's the people the that drink it, and they're, yeah. and they're okay yeah. with it. There's nothing well, wrong with that. And, you know, for, for quite some time, Michelob Ultra would show ads of people, like, working out and running and boxing and stuff. God, and who just, wants to work out and drink beer? Well, when it was over, that was what they would treat themselves <laughs> to, right? And and they didn't, didn't have to feel like they'd, you know, just done all this exercise, and now they were going to drink an Imperial Stout, you know, or whatever. So, to, uh, Although I know that's what you would do. Although I After feel like biking, drinking an Imperial Stout would be the reward. Well, again. Or Porter. I like Porters. Porters are good. Porters are good. So, uh, no, but just, uh, Mad Bishop is good. Mad Bishop is it's wonderful. It's real good. And, and Duclaw is, you know, we've had several beers from these guys now, and they've all been absolutely The first terrific. one uh, we ever had I brought on the show early, I early. It was a did, smoked yes. porter, and it was... Mm-hmm. Quite intense and quite delicious. Quite flavorful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. These guys, these guys are, are really into kind of cranking up some of the styles. You know, a lot of a lot of breweries will crank up their IPAs or crank up their uh, imperial stouts. These guys will do it with all kinds of different. And why? Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> these guys will do it with all kinds of different things. Your so. beer was broken, sir. Yes. All right. Speaking of beer, when we come back. I am going to lay a surprise hazy IPA on you and get your take on it. I'm very curious to see uh, whether you like this one or not. So uh, we'll be right back. All right. It is smoking and toasting. Smoking and Toasting, we are so proud and happy to be with you for show number 297, my friends. That is uh, getting... They haven't stopped us yet. Oh, we just said, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. We're going to get bad comments. Uh, we get bad comments anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, welcome back to the program. By the way, just just to uh, rub it in your face and mine, uh, that there are people in the world that have a lot more resources than we do. Uh, a Cohiba Humidor just sold on a Habanos auction for a record $2.8 million. A Cohiba Humidor. $2.8 Was million. Was it filled with cigars? Broke their record. Yes. Uh, the gavel went down for the winning bid of $2.8 million. Euros, uh, the largest bid ever placed for a humidor in Habanos history. Uh, it confirms the enormous star power, of course, of Cohiba, and uh, the uh, the humidor included 550 Cohibas. Yeah, you know, so that's still a lot per cigar. Jimmy but, Ng of Singapore uh, paid the price. You know, uh, so collector. so Cohiba has the cigar that comes out. Uh, I think they put it out once a year. The Spectre. Yes, and when that comes in the store, the the uh, the curators of the store are not even allowed to touch it. They uh-huh. have to wear gloves. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Actually. And they're a hundred dollars per cigar. Yeah, well, there's gonna, they're going to be even more than that uh, soon because the Cohiba prices are going up for sure. All right, at this point in time, I'm going to turn away and I'm going to look right. thoughtfully out the window. Okay, that's good because I'm going to pour the mystery hazy IPA for you. I'm, I'm going to gonna... look out the window as if I see something incredibly interesting. You know what we haven't heard in a while, by the way? A leaf blower? <laughs> a leaf blower? What's going on with that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're going to have to fix that. Yeah, and maybe there's something we but can I do I feel like our it, show so. is a little weird without a leaf blower going I know. on it, outside. It, it seems like something's missing, doesn't it? <laughs> I know you love those. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's outside of your comfort zone when I have it. It totally, totally like I, feel like I'm, feel... I feel like I'm posing for I love, a record. I love how you're staring off for, into the distance. For a record album right now. I'm just looking mm-hmm. off to the side, like, thoughtfully, like, something interesting over there. Uh, all right. So. Because right? uh, if it was, this is not like a metal album cover, because if it was a metal album cover, I'd be staring straight at the camera and looking a little angry. Looking like and, you're really and, pissed and with off. And my yeah. head tilted down a little bit. Right, right. Because that's that's the David Draymond disturbed look. Yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> so, all right, you can look. All right. Okay, I'm looking. You, you can you can return your attention. This to looks the hazy like a hazy IPA. IPA. It's exactly what it is. It is hazy, hazy. Uh, and I'll even go ahead and tell you hazy. it's a hazy. I don't know what camera's going on. It's anymore. a hazy double IPA. I used to have a camera with the thing flipped around so I could see. So this is the on. mystery. I don't know what's happening hazy anymore. Hazy double IPA. There you go. Ah, okay. So I just flipped it around. All right. So that's a little easier. We're gonna wave these around and take your first sip. It smells like. It smells grapefruity and it orange smells juicy. Smells like a hazy IPA, doesn't it? It does. Lots of carbonation, but not too much. 
You can tell it's big. I think you can tell it's a double. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a maltiness in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. It's not pine coney on the end. It's, it's, no, the haziness seems to yep. to keep that from getting too, uh, from very, too pine coney. Very citrusy, very citrus um, astringent on the aftertaste. Now, that's not totally a bad thing. Mm -mm. I can tell you as an IPA guy, I like this. It's um, it's good. It's it's very fruity. I mean, mm -hmm. it has almost a fruity pebble quality to it. Right. Remember right. the fruity pebbles beer? Who made that? The fruity pellets. That's made fruity by uh, Great Heights. Brewery. It has that fruity pebble kind of sweetness mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. lurking around in there. There's mm -hmm. a really uh, underlying hoppy bitterness that that I I'm, I don't really equate with a lot of the hazies. Right. But maybe because it's so I big. I think it's because it's, it's like so big. This has yeah. a punchy kind of taste yes, it does. to it, it as well. It, it tastes like a big IPA, and it is a double. Uh, would you? So you like it? I have to say I like it. Uh, would you uh, care to guess what brewery this comes to us from? Generally speaking, a pretty well-balanced IPA from here in town, I would guess is from Spindle Tap. Yeah. Or uh, I mean, because they're they're kind of the go-to for hazies, man. Like their their hazy menu is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they do have a lot of hazies on their menu. It doesn't taste like Saint Arnold at all. No, um, I agree with you. This is not their profile in yeah, any way. Saint Arnold would have. There's, there's also there's a little something sneaking around in the back of that, like in the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. I just think it's because it's such a big double. That a lot of that is the booziness of it and the way that it manifests itself Could in be. a hazy IPA. I'm for it. Well, Tell sir, me what we got. let me unveil for you. Uh, which camera, John? Show me which one. That one. Let me unveil for you the Carbach Rodeo Clown Imperial Hazy IPA. Good job, Carbach. Now, this is the reason I did it as a mystery was because I wanted you to taste it without knowing Carbock. that it was Carbach. Because let's be honest, we give them a pretty hard time on this we program. Do. Uh, but that is a damn fine big IPA. And Rodeo Clown, Rodeo Clown Rodeo has been the, around for a long time. Right, it is their double IPA. Yeah. But what they've done is they've taken it, they've made it hazy, and they've uh, labeled it. I think it I like Imperial. this better than their double IPA. This I, is, I agree. I agree, and I had one of those recently, and I can tell you that this is this is probably the two things that I really, really love that Carbach has on their lineup right now are this and then the Light Circus Hazy IPA, which is very grapefruity. Yeah, that like. one I can take or leave. It's okay. I, I don't right. think there's anything outstanding about that particular one. This is nice, though. This mm -hmm. is good. Uh, let's see. It's a job and a crazy one at that. The rodeo clown is used to being surrounded by a cloud of dust as he dances with the bulls to protect the riders. The intense haze in the air of the arena can be compared to that of the rodeo clown Imperial Hazy IPA. This takes on a rodeo legend, showcases uh, another side of the profession, Presenting flavors of orange and coconut. I did not get coconut. No, I got the orange for sure. Definitely orange. That kicks up a wonderfully intense haze and a softer mouth feel and less bitterness. I it's a good beer. Yeah, it really is. And and again, because and, because and it we comes have a in tendency eight point three. Yeah. And because we have a tendency to give these guys a hard time, uh I thought it only fair. This is new, I take it. Uh it's new to me. Let's I haven't it seen way. it before. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Me. Uh, I if this. this has been out before, I've missed it before. So it may be new this year. But I will tell you that, you know. Fair is fair. It's a good beer. Yeah, no, agreed. Uh, agreed 100%, man. Um, this it, It's been a while. We tried a, a few of their beers. What was the sea? The, 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 the Coastal. The Coastal, yeah. That was a that really was a good, good beer. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because the Camden. It was Camden, a lower end beer in terms coastal of Coastal Conservation Ale is what it was. Yes, Remember, really like, good. We, we looked at the can and it said nothing about like donating to Coastal Conservation right. or anything. We called them and we called them out on, on the show. That's right. And he got on there and he said, well, for whatever reason, they couldn't put it on the can itself, but it is on the six pack. On the six pack box. boxes. Yes. Yeah. Right. And it uh -huh. was. It's right there. And I, I'll stand by it. I bought. Uh, I bought six packs of that, especially places that didn't have a lot of craft but had the macro beer stuff. You'll mm -hmm. almost always find the Carbock. I've bought that and, and been very well, happy with it. Here in I'm not Houston. super happy with a lot of their beers right now. Right. They're just all kind of and and same old. So, how, how are you with Love Street? 
Love Street is, I think, an okay beer, although I don't know if the flavor profile has been changing on it. I don't know, but uh, I do know that they have released, and I have not tried, a Love Street Citrus. Uh, they have a Love Street Light as well. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they do. And I haven't tried either of those, but I will tell you, if I'm at a concert, right. they will usually have Love Street, and that's a way better prospect, I think, than you know Bud Light, Miller Light, oh, yeah, those kind of things. Without so, a doubt. So I, I'm not even though they're cousins now. Of, yeah, my big my big thing with Carbach now is is first off, um, I think they got stifled a little bit because they're coming out with a beer every once in a while. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, taking Love Street, their most popular beer, and making it light is not interesting to right. me. No, I, I agree with you totally. And taking totally Love Street agree. and making it citrus is not interesting to me. But coming up with a beer like this, where it's you know the double IPA. Well, hazy rodeo clown. That's kind of interesting. And to me. there you have it, the rodeo clown hazy double IPA, a really good beer. But it's pretty good from Carbon. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back. I'm going to get. I'm going to break out the shaker, and I'm going to show you how I make the perfect vodka gimlet. This is the first time I've ever made a cocktail on the show. You realize that? I expect this to be like the movie Cocktail. Oh, where you... oh it is. You wait till you see my moves. Yeah, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. Yeah. All right, we'll do that <laughs> coming up next. It's smoking and toasting. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In the it is smoking and toasting. Uh, it's the first smoking and toasting segment I've done standing up in the studio. I think so. Hey, man! Uh, it's the first, for, but everything. Yeah, first time for everything. So, welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about my uh, discovery of how to make the perfect uh, vodka gimlet. I've made this for a few people. They've all been crazy about it. So it's not just me saying that. I've had people ask me for the recipe, and I'm going to give it to you right now because it's really quite simple. Now, I'm going to start with the actual recipe that I got on the internet, I think liquor.com or someplace, for this uh, vodka gimlet, and then I'll let you know what I did to kind of adjust it as I made a few and, and decided what I liked more of or less of or whatever. Uh, the original... I, you know, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of uh, mixed drinks that have, like, the ingredients in the name. Oh, yeah, and this one, you like, know... Like whiskey and coke except for sometimes i order that and they send me off to the bathroom and talk to a guy yeah no that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's a different, different place thing. maybe that's i should hang different out thing. a different yeah maybe places. maybe the bars you're hanging out in are not the best uh but the uh, vodka gimlet recipe that i use as the base for this calls for two ounces of vodka so you know we'll be adjusting that. Um, three, <laughs> read, read. Yeah, three and a half <laughs> right. ounces of vodka. Three, uh, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, fresh squeezed, a half an ounce of simple syrup, and then they called for uh, a splash of uh, uh, club soda, and then you can garnish it with a lime. Now I've taken several uh, liberties with this recipe. First of all, I'm going to be making it for hopefully three of us. So this is the original recipe you right. started with. Exactly. But it's, it's not exactly how you always right. make and it. I'll, and I'll go through that. I, I went, uh, first of all, we're going to make a little more than that. So I'm going to use some right. For those of you that are rushing ones. around to grab your stuff, let's go through that one more time. Okay. What do we here, got? Here you go. We got two ounces of vodka. Yep. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, fresh squeezed. Yep. So get a lime, cut it, and squeeze an it. actual lime. Mm -hmm. And a half an ounce of simple syrup. And then a splash of... Um, what the recipe club calls soda. for, club soda, and then you garnish it with a lime. I'm not even going to worry with the garnish today, but I am going to upgrade a couple of things. And the first thing I'm going to upgrade is the amount of vodka that we're going to use. Uh, but what you do is you take all of this except for the club soda, and thank you, and you combine it in a shaker with ice and shake it until it's as cold as you can get it, and then you're going to pour it. And I'm going to pour it today for you and me. I've only got two of these, but for you and me, I'm going to pour it into my favorite martini glass. That's an awesome martini glass. My wife discovered glass. these. So do you ever see those beer mugs that you put in the freezer and they've got that yeah, gelatinous they got stuff gel inside? Stuff in the yeah, cold. and then it freezes and keeps your beer cold. Well, this does it for your martini. All right, I wish I'd have known this. Or in today's this. case, the gimmick. I wish I'd have known this because I bought for my wife. Uh, there's a company called Orca that makes uh, the double uh, vacuum insulated right. uh, steel cups like uh, right, like, like Yeti, a, like or, a Yeti like or Arctic, Arctic you know? yeah. mm -hmm. and they make a martini glass. Mm. And it's fantastic, and it's it's cool like that yeah. is. Well, this is this is awesome because you just put it in the freezer, and when it's martini time, you take it out. Your <laughs> martini stays martini cold. Martini time. But, yeah, which by the way, just so you know, I play that song at 
our house <laughs> by the River Horton Heath. <laughs> yeah, oh, it yeah. is, in fact, martini time. That's how my wife knows. She'll be in the closet, like, getting clothes <laughs> she knows ready it's for coming tomorrow. Up. Yeah, yeah. And when she hears it, and she knows it's martini time. Uh, but today it's gimlet time. So I'm going to let you know what I do. First of all, I'm going to make a slightly larger quantity because I want all three, you and I, and Jong and the Wheels of Steel to have some of this. So I'm going to use a slightly larger quantity. I've already squeezed uh, about. Um, about an ounce and a quarter of fresh lime juice. Okay. I did this before I left home, so I wouldn't so have to do it So that is as fresh here. as we can be without having to do it right it, here. Exactly. I thought it would take me too long to squeeze the limes and we'd be in, you know. Uh, do you have uh, one of those little, like, like the little lime squeezer things? I do, but, you know, I, for some reason, I like to do it by hand. So I put the, uh, I put the, uh, uh, I cut the lime in half. I, I hold it above this, and I just squeeze it and let the lime juice run into uh, that. But that's what I have you here like is the lime juice. You like to feel its lifeblood leak uh -huh. that's out exactly between right. your fingers. Well, and then what I can do is I can squash the pulps with my fingers yeah. so that it gives uh, gives you a little bit of extra juice out this of each of the limes. This is escalating quickly. All right, so I've taken uh, about an uh, ounce and a quarter, ounce and a third of fresh lime juice. The simple syrup, now you can make your own. I'm just using some that I bought at Specs. It's yeah. uh, the Ready Rabbit Simple Syrup. So I'm going to use, uh, for this, they call for a half an ounce. I'm going to use just slightly more than that because we're making a little more than the... Uh, than I like your little Pyrex cup there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's an easy measure. I've actually poured a little bit too much simple syrup, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to not pour all of it in. And then I'll pour the All rest right. into this. We'll have it if we need it later. There we go. All right. Then uh, vodka time. So here's where here's where the real change comes in. This calls I already, for, I, already, I got you, boo. Oh, you're, we're already up. I got you, boo. This calls for two ounces of vodka. Um, and I'm going to go with a, a bit more than that. 17. <laughs> uh, we're going to go Two with, ounces, two cups. It's close. Yeah. Now, remember, I'm making more than just one. This recipe is the recipe for one. So I'm already making more than... I'm going with six ounces of vodka here for... The, for, for three drinks. Actually, just a little more. It's, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like a chef, you know, just a pinch of this, a pinch of an that. An ounce right? for the bar, an ounce for me. Right. An yeah, ounce exactly. for the bar, two ounces all for right. me. All right. Now, all of that is in there. So basically what I do is I do dramatically more vodka and a little bit more of the oh, other elements you know to make enough of this. Do we need dramatic music? Hold uh, on. I think, I think you may want to shake, maybe some shaking music. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Here, bring it on, man. Let me get some ice here. Hold on. All right. Are we ready? Tell me when. I'm gonna set up. You gonna play room. like hippie hippie shake, or what are you gonna play? <laughs> <laughs> that is good shaking music. And now I learned this from a bartender. I watched the bartender do this. I don't know what that is. I don't know why that's a better shake, but you know. And then just who to knows, see if it affects you. Who knows what's going on with Chris Morris? Oh, see. This is why I enjoy doing the show with you, because you can go in a, in a completely spontaneous direction like this and make it work. All right. That should be all the shaking you need. You see the uh, the side of the shaker is nice and cold. You know, when I when I shake a martini, I wait until it actually gets frost on yes. it. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what I, that's what I like the best. I like, that's uh, like, that's like, the, that's like, like it the says thing. in the Reverend Horton Heat song, make it with a layer of ice this time. <laughs> all right. We're going to now pour this. And... By the way, I had a smaller shaker and I broke it. Like I broke the little uh, strainer piece out of the top. So now I just have this enormous one. Right. So I basically just make more and and, and drink more. We gotta have the pouring music. Are you okay. ready? Yeah, pouring music. Here we go. You ready? Okay. Oh, before we do, Topo Chico. Ah, hold Would on. You mind, uh, and I'm in charge of that. So let me put down the ukulele so for a moment. So what I like to do with the uh, I use Topo Chico instead of uh, club soda. I like that you have it also in the actual glass. Yes, absolutely. Glass glass bottle of Topo Chico. All right, so splash nice of Topo so Chico. A splash. So here's what I do. I put just yeah, about that much. Maybe a tiny bit more. I like Topo Chico for this, uh, or you could use Perrier or something like that, because I like it has tighter bubbles, finer bubbles, and that, to me, works best for the vodka gimlet. All right, so pour a little bit of Topo Chico in each. I would say 
I like it to be about just just under a quarter of the glass uh, Topo Chico. So okay. it calls for a splash. I do a little more because I've used more vodka. Gotcha. So okay. it helps it, it helps to even that out. So now I'm just going to pour. Oh, pouring music. I didn't. I only have two of these, but I'm gonna do a cup of this for John. Well. Well, now so. I'm gonna go into the reprise. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Go for it. Thought you were doing. Ain't gonna study war no more. So. All right, my friends. Witness the perfect vodka gimlet. Now. The recipe calls for you to garnish this with some lime. I've never been really good at doing that delicate cutting of, of the little thin stream. Little thin, yeah, 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 all yeah. that stuff. I, you know, but if I, you're good at that, definitely garnish it with that. Garnish cool. is real pretty. It's great for a picture, mm -hmm. but, you know. So, to the perfect vodka gimlet, cheers, my friend. Cheers. Ooh, I like this glass. Oh, yeah, that came out pretty good. My friend. Yeah. And here's the thing. This is so easy to make. Now, what I recommend uh, you, for you to do is that recipe that I read for you. I love that there's it. just a little bit of the pulpy. Uh, yes. Oh, I love that, the too. The little bits of pulp from the uh, And that's one of the reasons lime. I hand yeah, squeeze yeah. the lime without using one of those uh, limer things. I wind up getting a little bit of pulp in this. I, I would say that, to me, this is the perfect... Uh, Drink to make for like large groups of people when everybody kind of has different tastes and different mm -hmm. things that they like in cocktails. It's kind of an everybody can agree on it. Start with the recipe I gave you, and then kind of then work on like pumping up the vodka. You might like it. With you less have vodka to serve in. this in a martini glass because if you put it in a cocktail glass with a straw, it would be gone in twelve seconds. <laughs> you would have a freeze headache. And then you right. would ask for another. It's nice and cold. It has just to me the right balance of tart from the lime. And sweet from the uh, from the simple syrup, but see, you can adjust that to your individual taste. That's why it's a perfect uh, the perfect vodka gimlet. Because if you like them, you know more tart, you can use less. You know simple syrup. And there's if you just, like them more sweet, you can use more simple syrup. There's just enough of the uh, the uh, vodka on the retro hail, just mm -hmm. just a little bit to let you know that oh, you know you're, have, you're, having, a, bit, you're right? having a cocktail yeah now this obviously vodka, so I, I poured a little of this vodka to just try on its own this is a space city vodka mm -hmm. made from uh made by um uh uh, uh Remind made by Whitmire's, Whitmire's Distilling yes. Company, uh, Houston, Texas. This stuff so, is incredibly I, clean. There's I almost love, no this nose to it. This is my go-to vodka. I make martinis I mean, with this. There's like almost I no nose to it whatsoever. This is as right. neutral as I've, I think I've ever right. had. When you go with just a little of this in a cup, you get just a straight-up drinkable vodka. It doesn't have any of that harshness to it. It's just... It's as clean as it can be. And th that's it's, the reason I like this. It's so clean that it tricks you into thinking it's a little sweet. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I like this vodka for martinis and for uh, these uh, vodka martinis or kangaroos, as you call them. Uh, and also for these gimlets is because it doesn't impart a lot of its own flavor. It just allows you to, in this case, take the flavor of the lime right. and the sweet of the syrup. Or in the case of, like, it makes a really good, dirty vodka martini because you get all that olive flavor mm -hmm. from the olive juice or the filthy or whatever you're using. I like filthy, uh, by the way, for my filthy martinis. Yeah, you can buy it online. It's called filthy. It comes in these little pouches that have a little screw top on them, and you kind of squeeze the pouch, and it's it's lime juice, basically. But it's the best I've ever found. I think I got the idea from uh, Chris Morris. I think he used really? filthy when he came on and made uh, dirty martinis for us on the show. Not lime recall. juice, olive juice. I'm sorry, did I say lime juice? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, olive okay, juice, so my I was bad. confused for no, a minute No, I'm there. talking about when I make dirty martinis, the lime juice, uh, I'm sorry, I did it again. Ah. The olive juice that I use Have is Have you been filthy. drinking, sir? Uh, no, but I'm about to. So. <laughs> <laughs> I always know we say something funny when I hear the producer laugh. This, this drink goes down nice and easy, though. You know what I mean? Like I said, got, you could never serve this in a cocktail glass with a straw because... 13 seconds on a freeze headache like later. It's got just enough vodka in it 
uh, to let you know you are drinking an alcoholic mm -hmm. drink and keep you from just absolutely like gulping it down, although you could, I suppose. But it's got, I, I mean, it, it might keep you from doing it's that. Got, it's got that easy drinking vibe to it. So, so there you go. And listen, I am not in any way a mixologist. I can only make simple drinks. This is about as simple have as you ever, it gets. Have you ever but tried to uh, like up the, uh, up the ante on this and make like, uh, a jug of it that you can simply pour for a party? Um, I haven't done a jug, but I could totally see what I would probably do because I'm really bad at doing the math on on, on how much to use. <laughs> is mix some. I double would probably batches mix several until... double batches. See, there's still some left here. We could we could have a little more of a refill here. Yeah, I was gonna say if you uh, like, I can do. You know, so here's what I do: is the I make evaporative it... qualities on this are uh, quite. Yeah, you know, it is quite evaporative. Um, so what I do is I make this at home, and it's just my wife and I, right? Mm -hmm. And so I pour our first ones, and then I take the rest of what's here, and I pour it into, like, a beer glass and put it in the fridge. And that's the that's perfect. That's the first the... round of refills, right? Because nice. you, you don't have to get out the shaker for more refills if you have some left over. And it, and it really works perfect. The amount that I did today actually works, works perfect if there's two of you, but you're each going to want one refill. Uh, right, because you get just enough to refill the glasses again. So. All right, let's go over it again. So your, your, um, my variation, your variation on this is okay. you use a little more vodka. All right, so I use the now. Remember, I made so this four, is a batch for three. The batch you for three or possibly four, right? Or for me, if I'm just having a so good I night. So I used about seven ounces of vodka. Okay. Okay. And then I used about an ounce and a third, ounce and a half of fresh squeezed lime juice. So. Two to three limes, depending how big your limes are. Right, and then okay. you actually bumped up the uh, simple syrup just a touch. I did, and and in fact, well, I poured too much, and then I poured part of it out. This, I, I feel like, almost could use a touch more simple syrup. It's a little, the one that I made today is a little slightly more tart than it is sweet, and when you hit that balance perfectly, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, this is uh, pretty darn good. Well, so. And then I used a splash of Topo Chico that isn't really a splash. The original recipe calls for club soda, and I've made it with club soda, and it's good. I like it a little better with Topo Chico. Topo but, Chico doesn't have the club soda flavor. Club soda right. has its own kind of right. bitter flavor and to I it. And I like it better, again, just like I like that vodka very clean in this. I like I like the sparkling water very clean because it allows the lime and the simple syrup to be the flavors that you're getting. Yeah. And that's just beautiful. Just a beautiful thing. I think, honestly, I think there's a couple. Like, this is such a nice uh, kind of open canvas, too. You could add, mm -hmm. like, a little smoky. Uh, totally. Smoky flavor to it. You could or... add smoky flavor. You could do. Uh, you could add uh, like berries to it, like strawberry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Any any kind of thing that goes with lime. You know what might be great with this is a little shot of banana liqueur. Oh, not bad. I was thinking maybe in the bottom of a glass, one of those maraschino, one of those really oh, good maraschino one of those really cherries. Good maraschino cherries. Yeah. Not, I'm not talking about the bright red ones that no, you no. get. I'm talking about like the dark, gnarly looking red ones that like are seventeen dollars for a tiny jar of. <laughs> like one of those in the bottom of this. Would yeah. be pretty amazing. I could see you doing a lot of different things with this. I could also see you adding some lemon and making it more of a lemon lime. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, but you know, there's the the basic recipe is simple enough that you can take it and experiment it and play with it and do whatever. There you, is do whatever much you like. to be done with this. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But uh, well, thank you. I. I I didn't want to come on and do a cocktail until I was sure it would be one that wound up being good. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good about uh, about this. So, again, and you can get plenty of uh, recipes online for this. But the basic recipe for this is two ounces of vodka, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, fresh squeeze, a half an ounce of simple syrup, and a splash of, um, uh, of club soda. So... Bump up the splash of club soda. Bump up the, bump up uh, the simple vodka. syrup slightly, and bump up the vodka. Yeah, and and you almost can't over lime bump up this. The vodka. Bump up the vodka. I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, you almost can't over lime this, by the way. So if you wanted to to put more lime into it, you could totally. But do lime that. cuts anyway. So I feel like mm -hmm. sometimes if you do too much lime, you might be cutting a little too much. Well, again, if you're adding plenty more vodka, you should be good. There's that. Otherwise, right. you just end up emo. And All right. Cut a too uh, I'm going to continue to sip this. We will take a break. We'll be back because when we come back, we've done enough drinking now. The drinking news should be it's time, pretty my humorous, friend. I think. It is drinking time. news is next on Smoking and Toasting. It is smoking and toasting. 
This is the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. So I take it, my uh, friend, that you approve of the uh, Vodka Gimlets. Well, yes. This, they, they met uh, with your approval. Gimlet is not just a Tolkien character. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Gimli. I, you know, I uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm watching the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, Power of the Rings. Um, not necessarily because I'm as big a fan. I'm more about starships and space battles. Uh, but my wife loves it, so we, we've been watching I am, it. I am, and I've been enjoying it, actually. I, I fell asleep during the first one. You told me that. And I'm not watching them at the moment because I am a huge fan. Well, well so I can and, tell you this. And uh, did I mention? Oh, yeah, I think I went on a rant on the atrocity that I think the Hobbit was. Yes, yes, the, because they turned it into all this other stuff. Yeah. But I will tell you this about so this one at least though, they're not messing with your known characters from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. These, as far as I know, are new characters. I may not be well the foremost authority. I, uh, I may I may go into that. I I'm a little judgmental on it just because like. They trashed the Hobbit so bad and turned it into a bizarre romance with a the 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 character that um was the the big bad guy with the the mm -hmm. thing through mm -hmm. his arm and all that stuff the mm -hmm. orc was literally just a quip in the actual book in the actual book yeah. he was a wow. quip like they made all of that like which is probably uh. Probably a quarter to a third of all three movies, they turned that into like a quip into that. Like I just, and then they made that weird, bizarre love scene thing in the, in the dungeons. Yeah, and like, yeah, uh, well, here's come what I can, on, here's man. what I can tell you about this series on Amazon Prime. Okay, I'm not coming into this as a fanboy of the series. I've read the books. I enjoyed them. But this is not where I go. I'm more about Star Trek, Star Wars. That's my that's my world when I geek out, right? But my wife loves this stuff and I, I wanted to, you know, watch this with her and I've been enjoying it. That said, I had no clue what was going on during the first episode. Zero clue during the second episode. In the third episode, there's four of them been released so far. I felt like some things were coming together, like I was beginning to go, oh, okay, I kind of see what's happening here. And then the fourth episode, I'm completely clueless once again. But all that said, I am enjoying it. So that's how well done I think that it yeah, is. Yeah, I think I think my problem is when I when I start to equate it to Tolkien and the Rings and the lore of the Rings, not the Lord, but the actual lore of the Rings, I think the problem is I already have read and I think most of the people watching this have not read the Silmarillion, have not probably not have no. not read most of the books numerous times, and things like that. So I think that I get a little a uh, little annoyed at some of the changes they make. So even in the movies, you know, the Lord of the Rings movies were well done, but they made some weird, unnecessary changes. In the Hobbit, it was ridiculous. And the only reason they did three movies was because, well, frankly, you can make three times the amount of money. Sure. From a book that was one third the size of any of the other books. But I will tell you this, though. Even with those Hobbit movies, if before you watch them, you drink a lot, they're pretty awesome. Well, you know what's awesome to watch? Like, if you want to watch something long, yeah. watch The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Oh, that's a great one to watch yeah. if you've been drinking. I mean, if it makes, you know, if you just want to watch some long movie that makes sense, it's kind of like certain news stories. Certain news stories may or may not be about drinking, but they may be best enjoyed if you have Which been. Which news stories are that? Those would be the news stories we call drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. I know y'all were thinking we sounded drunk when we weren't going to go into this. Drinking news. <laughs> drinking news. Now it's time. This is almost like a, like a second nature thing mm -hmm. now. I don't yes, even have it to is. think you about it, right? to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a Florida man with one upset had a gator for a pet. When asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, I had to take my gator to the vet. Drinking news. Drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. <clears throat> well, mm. that is awesome. 
I had to have a little more gimlet before the I started. The gimlet. I'm about to destroy the rest of mine. There's a problem, my friend, in Nigeria. Where, right. where donkeys, which are heavily used across that country as work animals, are seeing their population drastically diminished. Well, donkeys uh, can't reproduce, right? Uh, that's mules. Oh, that's mules. Donkeys yes. can't yeah, reproduce. Donkeys sorry. can, yes. But but I thought the same thing when I first uh, saw the story, and then I went and like checked that oh, out to make sure right, I knew. Okay. All right. But donkeys are notoriously difficult to breed. They can be bred, but they're but it's not easy. And they're now facing an even larger problem in the reproductive area, as apparently a portion of the male donkey's anatomy is being smuggled out of the country in record numbers. Yes, that's correct, my I'm friends. I'm sorry, what? It is pretty difficult for the male donkey to mate if he no longer has a penis. The Associated Press... Has reported that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> what I'm inferring from this, yes, is that uh, people are stealing donkey dicks. Pretty much. The Associated Press has reported that Nigerian officials have seized around seven thousand donkey penises last week that were extracted from donkeys and were about to be exported to Hong Kong. Extracted, removed. I, <laughs> I think extracted is a much gentler term than like like if someone was to extract your penis. I think that's like I can see someone extracting like a molar bodily fluids. That's a different sure. thing. But right. extracting a penis, no, that's being torn off, cut off. Mm -hmm. um, that's a what the heck? Sacks of the donkey male genitals were seized at the international airport in Lagos, Nigeria's largest city, according to the Nigeria Customs Service. Is this a new thing where they, like, stuff them and put them on the wall? No. These bags of phalluses were discovered after the <laughs> smell <laughs> from the packages aroused suspicion. I'm oh, sorry, sir. That smells like a bag of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Sambo Dangaladima. The customs controller at the airport told the BBC <laughs> that a pungent smell was coming from the bags, <laughs> arousing suspicion among the customs officers who then opened the packages to find, and I just can't say this phrase too often, 7,000 donkey penises. Oh, Jesus. What does 7,000 donkey penises yeah. even look like? The illicit oh trade, the illicit trade of donkey parts, including the animals' penises and their skin, from Nigeria to China, is actually quite common. The animal parts are used in China to make a traditional medicine called Iaho or Ijaho, E J I A O. I like to call it Ijako. Go ahead. <laughs> That took me a moment. I'm sorry. In June, the Nigerian Customs Service has said uh, that they had intercepted three 100-kilogram bags filled with donkey genitalia and 3,000... Who takes this medicine? 3,712 pieces of donkey skin at an airport. Back in March, four suspects were arrested there while they were trying to smuggle 2,754 donkey penises. Now, what I find most interesting about this is that they didn't say more than 2,500 or around 3,000. They said 2,754, which means that it was someone's job to manually count all 2,754 donkey schlongs. <laughs> but that... That, sir, is redonkulous. By the way, that's not to be confused with Donkey Kong, which is something, you know, much, much different. Oh, my God. What is also quite interesting is that there is apparently an organization in that country called the Donkey Dealers Association of Nigeria. All right. I'm just trying to unpackage some things. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, let's put one thing out of the sack first. Um, <laughs> so... They're making a medicine with this penis? Apparently so. Penis is. So somebody's putting donkey dick mm -hmm. in their mouths. Mm -hmm. 
Like, does someone mention that that's what it's made from? Because if if I was to say, hey, man, try it. Hold on a second. Let me get a little cup here. Let me get this cup here. Okay. And then I just pour something in there. I'm like, hey, man, try this. It's donkey dick. No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, like, that would be my response. Mm -hmm. Zhang, how do you feel about this? Uh, nope. Yeah, he's a solid no on the, like... Listen, what you have to understand is there's an organization in this country called the Donkey Dealers Association of Nigeria. And this week, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the Donkey the, Dealers Association the of D Nigeria. The D-Dan? Yeah, yeah. The, the D-Dan? This um, week, the Donkey Dealers Association of Nigeria <laughs> urged the Nigerian government to prosecute those who engage in the indiscriminate killing of donkeys and the smuggling of their dongs outside the country. Do they have to kill them to take their penis? I mean, like, I, I'm I, let guessing, me be honest. I'm if guessing you took mine, be, I might consider it. But, but I'm guessing it's pretty difficult to keep them alive once they're, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah I suspect, yeah. yeah. Here at Drinking News, by the way, we know what you're thinking. You're thinking that this story might not even be true. You're thinking that even if it is, we're bringing it to you only because I get a special junior high school feeling of delight out of getting to repeatedly say donkey penises well you'd be wrong about the first thing and pretty much spot on about the second i do in fact find some special pre-adolescent joy in saying the phrase donkey schlongs or talking about a, a bag of dicks and if, <laughs> and if that if that makes me immature i guess i'll just have to deal with it either way i probably have to agree that as drinking news stories go this one pretty much sucks donkey. Uh, well, can you imagine? You get okay, the so, idea. so you're 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 the guy at the airport and you come home from a long day at work. And your wife's like, How was work today? And you're like, donkey dicks. Yeah. Like bags of them. Thousands of donkey dicks. Uh, I, I, what do you do? <clears throat> Reporting live from Lagos, Nigeria, where I keep having to insist you do it. There's no freaking way I'm counting those things. My name is Cruz, and that is your drinking news, drinking news, doggy dicks on drinking news. <laughs> Cheers, y'all. <laughs> uh, so I told you it was more fun than the a lyrics bag of, must, must, adapt. must change. Yeah, it, it's, it's, good to, it's good to know when to adapt and when to, uh, and uh, when yeah. to keep going. Like, there's so much to unpack. Yes, there is. Like, that's a hard subject. There's like 207,015 things to unpack, and they're all donkey penises. <laughs> can you imagine? I, I, can you even imagine? Like, like, I, like what I is the medicine? Weird. Do we have more information on what they're making out of them? Uh, who knows? It's probably some fertility thing, like like rhino's horn. Like, we were, like the, in, in Chinese uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, medicine, let they, me, they let get me point this out. Like, from, let me point this out. If someone came to me and said, Okay, here's some rhino horn. It's going to make you hard for like more than four hours. Um, I don't need that. We already have stuff for that. Yeah, I mean, that that exists, but but that's not as hard to palate as, yeah. As, you know, here's, you know, donkey phallus. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, because it's a medicine, right? So where's it going to go? It's going to go in your mouth. I'm just saying You're you putting donkey phallus up. in your mouth. And I'm just and telling therefore, you. And therefore, I don't know what's. I don't you know can't what, make I'm just up. saying, you study for years and years to become an architect. You build house after house to become right. an architect. You put one donkey phallus in your mouth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get where you're going with this. I get where you're going with this. Oh, uh, all right. I, I, I think there's almost nothing left this to do but have beer at this point. Nothing left to say. There's nothing left to do or say, but uh, just uh, uh. let's have some beer. We are um, trying to segue from donkey phalluses into uh, a little something from Anchorage Brewing Company. It's called The Tide and Its Takers. It's a triple with retinomyces, and I'm uh, excited to see what comes out of this because... I love how you extended that. It wasn't a big pop at the end, but it yeah. still was perfect. I was, because, I was hoping for a little more pop because yeah. the scrunchy sounds were awesome. The, the, the scrunchy sounds were so good that uh, <laughs> you almost just have to go with that, that little squelching noise. That was pretty cool. So, all right. Uh, this is 
a uh, this I'm expecting something really exotic here. Oh my gosh, the smell! Woo, baby, I'm smelling that right out of the cup, and it is like uh, I'm just getting a waft from it. It smells like uh, like sour bubble gum. It smells like Teen Spirit, doesn't it? Like Teen Spirit. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, yeah. so if you smell it from from what is that about eight inches from my nose? It smells like bubble gum. Right. And as you it's get closer. Gotta- you get that sour, get, sour note, and you get more of the booziness too. And yeah, because what is the ABV on this? Let's see if I can find it here. Um, oh, it tastes like bubble gum. It's nine percent. Oh my goodness, it tastes like bubble gum. It is. Um, they're not going to say that on here, is it? Uh, this is uh, it. the Tide and its Takers Triple with Brettanomyces, aged in French oak Chardonnay barrels. Uh, so I can taste the Chardonnay. Ale brewed with uh, Styrian golden hops, triple fermented, first in oak tanks with Belgian yeast, second in French oak Chardonnay bellers with Brett, and finally in the bottle with a third yeast for natural carbonation. There is not much of that going on. No. I have what year was this? This is batch tw- fermented in Alaska, batch six. Okay, so this, this is, is actually aged just yes. a little bit. Nice. Yes, it has. This is an unshort ale, wild and remote. There's a beer where the sea used to be. I believe there will be many takers for this tide. It begins with a soft and spicy floral note uh, on the nose. The Brett notes are measured and reverberate around the lemon cream pie hops, like ripples around yeah, the Yeah, I totally the get the lemon scene. cream pie. Yeah, lemon cream pie. Mm. But there's a sourness to it that I wonder, is it there's really bubble gum, pleasant? though, like classic yeah. bubble gum in there. Like, am I the only one, John, are you getting that? Mm. Like classic bubble gum, like like the kind you get out of a, a, a like baseball card, baseball card, yeah, bubble yeah. gum. All right, uh, let's see. Bazooka Joe, like ripples around a buoy and a beam. See wood notes, uh, mm, that's scratched off, and uh, drift and float by, bringing a bit of vanilla towards the end. But mostly wood does the important work of softening the heat of a multi-phase fermentation that is three fathoms deep putting a sniffer in his beer up to your lips is like putting a conch shell up to your ear living right up against the atlantic ocean here in delaware nothing says welcome home to me uh, so much as the rhythmic crashing of an incoming surf on land and i get that familiar feeling when drinking the tide and its takers like a powerful ocean you cannot taste this beer you cannot take this beer for granted it's complex it has a lunar pull that makes you reflexively go for the next sip, and it pulls you in the right mood, uh, puts you in the right mood to appreciate life's uh, nature's beauty. To paraphrase, hmm. folk punk Michelle Shocked, you know you're in the largest state of mind in the Union when you're anchored uh, down in Anchorage. Cheers. Wow, that is one of the longer uh, passages that a lot. I think, yeah, that, I've, uh, that I've ever had. I, I, I felt, I felt a little beer, awkward. I got about halfway yeah. into that. Mm-hmm. I was like, well. I gotta keep going now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure I love this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I love how interesting it is. I love how flavorful it is. But part of the dankness of this doesn't sit well on my palate. So here's the things I love about it. I get the Chardonnay barrel, especially mm-hmm. on the aftertaste. Mm-hmm. There's a very Chardonnay, uh, dry oak thing going on for sure. That's Big super time. nice. I like uh, the 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 kiss of sour on it. That's really nice. There's no carbonation left in this at all. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, batch number six, fermented in Alaska. This is a 2019 version of this. And it might be the aging that did it. Might maybe, be, yeah. maybe it needs to be fresher. But this this is a type of beer that should uh, that should uh, age theory, well should in the bottle. Well. Yeah, you would think so. But this tastes like bubble gum. In a good way? It just, well, it's not bad, but it really is, uh, it really, it's like bubble gum with a little cinnamon in the back, like classic bubble gum flavor with cinnamon in the back. As interesting as all that is, it's not my favorite beer we had today. uh, And a Chardonnay uh, aftertaste. Right. And oak. Wow. I don't know that I find it, it's interesting. It's definitely worth drinking. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not a beer that's gone south. It hasn't gone to the point where it's not drinkable. Boy, it is making me burp too. Interesting. Well, like big time. But uh, and there's not a lot. Of, like, it's like, look, here's a hard pour. Watch this. Nothing. Yeah, there's like, virtually no. Very very small amount of carb left in there. Mm. 
It's yeah, it's like it's like a sour bubble gum almost. It's crazy. I'm man, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe sour bubble gum is not a thing I dig. I dig, but I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm saying there are things about I it think, I don't like. I think the blend of flavors is not very good, actually. There you go. That maybe that's a good way to say it. Because there are flavors. I like the initial. There's something in the funk. There's something in the dank that I don't crave the way I ordinarily do for things that are dank. I like the initial flavor on the tongue. I mm-hmm. even like Agreed. the aftertaste. It Agreed. has this kind of bitter, a little bit of funk, and a little bit of a uh, sweet, and it's very bubblegum. Like I can't, I can't even say that enough. Yeah. There's something in the middle of it that's just not that pleasant the way it transitions from one thing to another. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think that it's it's weird. It is, however. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, did I see a percentage on here? Nine percent. Mm-hmm. At 30 IBUs. Not, not so exciting. The artwork's kind of nice, though. It's got this big, giant, yes. crazy-looking C on it right there. Mm-hmm. But Anchorage Brewery, I like... I would like to try this. Like, this is one of those where you want to try one that's like a 2019 and you want to try a fresh one. Absolutely. Because I bet, I agree. I I bet there's a monstrous difference. And I bet it, yeah, I bet it's different when it's right out of the tap, right at the yeah. brewery, for sure. I mean, because, like, cause I would assume, though, like, this, just from all descriptions, I would think would would store and um, and age well, bottle age really well. Mm-hmm. But I think that what we're running into is maybe this did not bottle age so well. Yeah, I think it very well could be. Because it's the flavor profile I feel is like a I little like awkward. What's there, but it, something is awkward. Yeah, it's yeah, a little agreed. awkward. Agreed. That said, these guys have done so many of these beers so well that even if this one is a little off, you got to say they're Anchorage and they seem to know what they're doing. I'm going to drink it still. I think so. While he does that, we'll take a break. We'll be right back to wrap up the show. It's smoking and toasting. This program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. Oh. And we will be right back. The more I drink it, the less I like it. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. This program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. A uh, fun show today. I loved making the gimlets. I'm so glad you liked them. The gimlets uh, were awesome. Yeah, um, and I think we both are turning a little bit on this Anchorage uh, uh, beer. It's not. It's not very good. Yeah, and that could be because I held on to it too long. Uh, I, That's it's I possible. Think, I would I'd, think I'd, that it would age better. I'd like to but, try a fresh version of it and see what it tastes mm-hmm. like. Uh, because right now we could totally do one of those. Uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the, uh, the 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 titles for the show, the uh, clickbait title. And oh yeah, like, yeah. Carbock <laughs> makes better beer than Anchorage. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, imagine but that's, that. You know, like, imagine that as a clickbait title. That's yeah. ridiculous, you know. But I mean, like, the, but this particular Anchorage is not standing up. And I think, I got to be honest, I think it's the aging on it. It's and the turned into weird sour bubble gum. The particular Carbock that we had was actually quite good today. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, it happens. It definitely happens. Next week on this program, Daryl McNally will join us. He is the CEO mm. and master distiller of Limavady Irish Whiskey. So I'm really kind of excited for this show. I can't wait for him to tell us how bad we're mispronouncing that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure I'm <laughs> sure it's going to be a lesson for each of us to learn. But I, I'm actually excited to ask him about uh, Conor McGregor's whiskey, too. Oh, God. Like, see, see if you'll be... Uh, you know, diplomatic that or not. That stuff is not good. It's nasty. <laughs> Let me be diplomatic about it. It's crap. Yeah, th- then that is being diplomatic. You have to and that's that. that's being nice about it. Because, like, if you take a sip of that stuff, it's hard to not keep finding terrible stuff about it. It's kind of like a bag of donkey dicks. Yep. <laughs> kind of like that. It's at least like that story. It's hard to yeah. not find stuff wrong with it all day long. <laughs> there is so much wrong with that story. Oh, my God. At least it was actually true. There's a guy out there that's like, hey, man, we're going to go cut off some donkey dicks and make bank. Yeah, that's a plan. I mean, that there are people out there doing that's that right now. That's a plan in Lagos. That's, that's a plan. Nuts. Yeah, it is. So No, it's not nuts. It's it's yeah, yeah but sorry, yes, but you get yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. You know where this is going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, uh, hanging in there with us through the donkey schlong story, and uh, thanks for being a part of our program. We appreciate it. Back next week for two ninety eight, and then we're closing on three hundred, and then the big one will be three thirty three. We're excited about it. Have a great week, my friends, and uh, 
Cheers, y'all. Cheers, y'all. Sunshine is so good to you. Whatever happens, don't leave it so.